here at Constitution Gardens. An enormous percentage of those are veterans. Veterans from around our great nation are compelled to make a pilgrimage to the Vietnam War. Veterans. Some are soldiers, Roger. Some are Marines, man. Some are airmen, Chuck. Others are sailors, John, or Coast Guard. Old soldiers. And young soldiers. Career soldiers. And first-term soldiers. You see, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We all come. And we veterans all come to the hallowed ground of our war memorials. We come for three distinct reasons. Number one, we veterans come to reunite. In no other profession is the individual or the collective identity as strong, as impelled, as it is in the U.S. Armed Forces. The military is first and foremost a family. Soldiers, young and old, go to our memorials to see their family. Both those who are living and those who have lived. Some come to reunite with just a single brother whose name is listed up on the wall. Others come to reunite with a group of brothers that are going to be gathered there. Broad reaching, our armed forces are not confined, are not restricted to just a single period of time or only a single conflict. You see, the military is not just a family. It's an extended family. And it's all inclusive. Even those of us that didn't fight in a conflict that a particular monument represents, we still come. We come because we're brothers. We share the same values. We share the same standards. We share the same love of nation. We come because we share the same family blood. Family members are able to empathize with one another. We better go to our memorials because we can't stay away from a family reunion. Second, we veterans come to our memorials to remember. Not so much as to grieve for the fallen. To the contrary, we go so that we can let the fallen up. The honor, the respect, to pay tribute to those troopers who've gone before us. Courageous men who epitomize selfless service and heroism. Men who established and then built a tremendous legacy of honor and distinction. We better go to our memorials to remember men and women who believed and lived the Latin motto, the Desert Verse, which translated means, let valor not fail. Today, we're here in Roswell, Georgia to remember and to pay tribute to the 58,260 names up on the Vietnam Wall and all the other names on memorials, monuments, and tombstones around this nation. Every name representing a warrior. And even though some wore different uniforms, they were all brothers. They all fought for the same flag. They all fought for the same country. These veterans did not just serve in the finest tradition of the U.S. Armed Forces. No. You see, they also added to the rich and the sordid history of this nation. But we veterans don't just come to our memorials to reunite. And we don't just come to our memorials to remember. You see, there's a third reason that we go. We veterans go so that we can refocus. We go because we know that we gain strength and we gain courage and we gain confidence when we periodically pause and we note the example of our heroes. And while it might not always be easy to go to our memorials and look back at the past, we know that in doing so, it helps us face the challenges of our head and to face those challenges with confidence and with assurance. You Vietnam veterans and your families need to know that when active duty service members like me go to the wall, that we're challenged. We're challenged to live up to the legacy and the reputation and the standards of the men and women whose names are engraved on those granite stones. Seeing those names helps to ensure that we remain properly focused on what's right 
and properly focus on what's important. I would ask everyone here today, in your own personal endeavor, to refocus. And listen to me for a second. Listen to me, friends. There's a large portion of the citizenry of this nation that needs to get refocused. I would ask, in your own endeavor to refocus, that you would commit that before you depart here today, that you would seek out you would find a veteran, that you'll pull him aside or her aside, look him dead in the eye, and tell him that you appreciate their service, that you appreciate their sacrifice to our country. Tell him, tell him, it's a proud of There's an excellent chance that it'll be the first time anyone has ever thanked them for their contribution. And I want to take that opportunity. I want to thank all you veterans, and I want to thank all your families as well. I want to thank you on behalf of a grateful nation, and I want to thank you on behalf of all those who are still wearing our uniforms. We are profoundly grateful. And we owe you. And we owe you an enormous debt of gratitude for your selfless service. In closing, let me say that the other thought, the other thought that always comes to mind on those early morning visits is a quote by the philosopher John Stuart Mill. He said, war is an ugly thing. It's not the ugliest of things. The decayed and degraded state of moral and patriotic feeling, which thinks nothing's worth the war, is worse. A man who has nothing that he's willing to fight for Nothing that he cares more about than his own personal safety is a miserable creature. And he has no hope of being free. And he has no hope of being free. Unless he's made and kept so by the exertion of better men than himself. Every time that I go to Constitution's Army, Every time that I go to the Vietnam Wall, I remember those words. Words words that refer to me to my soul. And I never fail to recognize that I am standing in the presence of those better men. And those that are worthy. For all of you here today, know that your armed forces, your armed forces, know that we will always remember. Others may forget, but we will always remember. Know that we will always be proud. Know that we will always be prepared. And we'll do so because freedom is a free. Thank you again for allowing me to come today.